Okay, looks like we're pretty much all set. Are we ready to go? Three, two, one, let's go. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to my studio. Welcome back to my stream. I'm Pierre, your host. I hope you're all doing well this Wednesday. I know that I'm doing okay, except that it is freezing in my studio. It is so friggin' damp that I'm all bundled up. I didn't even bother, bother putting on my work pants. I'm just going to try to be very clean. So anyways, my friends, we are going to start off our day by going over to the computer. We're going to do like we do every day. We're going to check out a quick recap of what we did yesterday, and then we'll tackle our day from there. So what did we do yesterday? Well, yes, yesterday we, we tried out a new color. We, we had in mind using, uh, going for some pink, some light magenta, and then we ended up uh, experimenting with this kind of a salmon color. So that is basically what we did yesterday. The only problem is, is that as I walked in the studio, uh, there is no way, no way in the world I can go with this color. Uh, when I was uh, a DJ and um, um, an engineer at Vermont Public Radio and WKXC in White River Junction, Vermont uh, for 10 years. One of the things they told me, uh, the first things they told me when they taught me how to be a, a, D, a DJ um, was never apologize for your mistakes. And the reasoning behind that is that if you miscued a record, don't apologize, don't mention it because 98% of the listeners won't even notice it. By apologizing, you just bring your attention towards a mistake, and that's a no-no. Well, and I did have a great radio show, I must say. For 10 years, it was called La Java. It was uh, basically world music. I played uh, tons of uh, reggae and uh, the Afrobeat with Fela. I played a lot of South American music. And if I could squeeze in some Grateful Dead or some punk music, I would do that as well. So anyways, it was a blast. I, I loved doing it. And that's probably how I, why I feel so comfortable talking to these cameras and doing this uh, kind of a live show um, from my studio. That's one of the reasons. The other main reason basically why I do these streams is because uh, I noticed uh, since I come into the studio every day to paint, why not use this awesome technology that we have to broadcast and show people what goes on in the studio and the process that I use for my paintings. I've been uh, filming myself painting since like the 1980s really, uh, because I always find it, found it uh, fascinating to watch other artists and how they would paint. I even, uh, when I was like uh, between two jobs, when I was a carpenter back in the States, a uh, painter and a carpenter. I would do carpentry so I could make some money and pay for the rent. And then as soon as I had some money and saved up or the job ended, I would be out of work for a week or two. And that's when I would paint. And, uh, and I forgot what I was going to say about all that. So <laughs> anyways, I started uh, filming and painting back in those days. I guess I was going to do something, say something like that. Anyways, let's not waste any time. Let's, uh, let me get my, this is going to be a very short stream anyways, so I guess I can take a few seconds to, to talk it up for a few minutes. So uh, I am basically going to go over this first coat and hopefully, hopefully I won't have to put a second coat, which I probably will tomorrow. So I basically blew a day of painting uh, by trying something new, but sometimes you, that's how it works. You have to try something new. I could leave it, but uh, if it's to be unhappy with what I'm doing, what's the point? So screw it. I am going to go over this. I'm going to grab a light magenta or a magenta, add some white to it, or maybe just use some, some pink. Let's go with this. So let me grab... Uh, there we 
go. A nice little pallet. Nice clean pallet. Let me grab my knife. It does happen to me quite, well, not a lot, but it does happen that I, some, that I come back the next day from what I did and just have to go over it because I just don't like it. Screwed up. It does happen. And that's the way it goes. No big deal, really. Except that I kind of, you know, like anybody, you're, you're anxious, you can't wait to finish what you're working on. So when you lose a day, it's kind of a drag, but not the end of the world. No, the end of the world is going a few thousand miles east of here in Ukraine, unfortunately. Feel sorry for those people. They are going to be living a real nightmare for the next week or so. Ugh, terrible, terrible. So, anyways, let's get back to my reality. I'm going to grab a brush here. I guess maybe I'll use this brush. Kind of wide and smooth. Uh, this feels right. So I'm going to take a few minutes and add a bunch of water to this paint. Not that I want it thinner, but it's way too thick to use this way. So I'm just going to water it down a little bit. Just so it glides on the canvas nicely. I mean, this salmon color isn't that bad, really. I just don't think it marries itself with the, with the other colors. So I'm banking more on what I'm going to be using now. I mean, by the way, these are all colors that I've never used before. I've never used a, a turquoise for my leaves, never used cerulean uh, blue for my other leaves, uh, or a salmon color in one of my paintings. So it's all new and sometimes it works. Like the background and these leaves I love. But uh, the salmon just didn't quite make it for me. So I'm still going to add a little more water. This is way too thick. I hope I have enough uh, paint there on my palette. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because I always can make some more since the color is straight out of the jar and I'm not mixing it. So I don't have to find and match the colors if I have to make some more afterwards. And I should remember that I'm not in my work pants, so I better not get too sloppy either. I mean, when you're dressed to paint, uh, you can be a real pig. It doesn't matter. And I rare, I have very few shirts or pants that don't have paint stains on them. So I try not to, when I do have pants uh, that are clean, try not to screw them up. So this looks pretty good. I think it's a little bit thick. Maybe one more fat drop of water. Just blend this all in. I don't want to put too much water because I want the paint to be nice and opaque, if possible. I don't want to see through it. Already, I'm not sure what it's going to look like by putting this color on top of the salmon, which might mean that I'll have to put another coat on tomorrow if I want the, the paint to be nice and uh, vibrant. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I think I can start with this. 
I'm going to set this down for a second. Because I'm going to start on the left-hand side and work my way down to the lower right-hand side since I'm right-handed. So I'm going to start off with my, uh, my guide down here, his head. So therefore, I'm going to bring my chair over. There we go. And I'm also uh, going to bring my camera number one a little bit closer. And I'm going to set them off to the side just like that so I'm not in front of the lens, which is something I really don't like to do. There we go. So that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go and let's try this out. Switch over to camera number one. There we go. Just like that. go. And it looks like it's going to cover up very nicely, which is a relief. I'll only know tomorrow, though, if it needs a second coat or not. tomorrow's problem. There we go. All this, of course, will be covered up. At least the edges will be all covered up, so. Okay, very good. So, let me just pull, pull the chair back. As I am going to start up here. So, now you can see the difference of the two colors, the pink and the salmon. And I, uh, I am definitely going to go with the pink. I prefer that. There's going to be a darker magenta around it, which would look a lot nicer. So I think I did the right move by going over and fixing, well, something. I won't say a mistake, but something that just wasn't pleasing to my eyes, at least. And I'll tell you a secret. I am my biggest fan. So... <laughs> 
it's important that I'm happy. So let's go ahead then and work on these arms. Again, on the edges, I don't have to be that uh, precise because I will be uh, covering all that. There will be a black outline. And then in the inside, there will be all the shading that we will do tomorrow if we don't need a second coat. There we go. So since I'm going to be doing this and it's kind of boring and whatnot, I'm going to play some music. Why not? So let's uh, just listen to a little bit of music. This is music by my friends. Uh, Jacek on the guitar, Diego who's on the violin, and Lucien who's on the drum. I still have no idea what I'm gonna, what my, what he's holding in his hand. I haven't painted that yet because I want to leave myself with that flexibility of, of changing my mind. At first, I was going with uh, shit, paint on myself. At first, I was going with uh, like a virus. And then with this war going on in Ukraine, I might change and do something else. I'm not sure. But I have a couple of days to worry about that, so I'm going to just take this one step at a time.
This is nothing but a big deja vu from yesterday. But that's all right, because as I step back and take a look, I am more satisfied with this color than I was with this uh, salmon. down a little bit this way. So I'm going to bounce back over here since I'm, again, like starting on the left-hand side because I'm a right-handed. You see my hand is already, no, you can't see because I forgot to move the camera. There we go. And you see, if I start here, I can have my hand right here. And if I worked my way like this, I would have my hand in the wet paint. That's why I try to always start from left and go to the right, even though it looks like I'm bouncing back and forth. But it's, uh, it's on purpose. changer la couleur là je pouvais pas euh, non tenter quelque chose de nouveau puis aujourd'hui euh... ouais allez tu nous fais un, un bleu et un jaune là pour l'Ukraine c'est le fait hein, pour moi <rire> oui non mais sérieux hein. ouais ouais je sais 
Tchau, bonne journée. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the end here. I don't know which side goes on top of what. Let me just figure this one out. Oop, I guess this one is the one that's on top. We're going this way, so I might as well try to get the brush strokes going the right way. this guy back like that. I'm sure I won't screw up. I'm gonna have to grab my chair anyways. Boy, this paint is on thick. Which is no big deal really, but still. get close to the edge as I mentioned before because I'll be I'll be adding uh, an outline but that doesn't mean I have to be sloppy either so Okay, there we go. So I'm going to pull the camera back for a few seconds because I am going to definitely need my chair. There we go. And I guess here I can start from the left work my way to the right hand side of this painting. Get a little drop of water though first. There we go.
So, we got that part done. Let me pull this camera back a little bit. There we go. And I think I'm going to put on, uh, so let me first of all get rid of this here. Then I think I'm going to put the first coat of the background of the frame. May as well get that done today as well. I just suddenly had the insight of what color I was going to use. I'm going to go with a kind of a light dark purple. I don't know how I'd call it. But I'm going to check that out in a few seconds. So let me get that ready right away. Let's not waste any time. Let me get rid of this little window in window that pops up when I have the music on, which drives me crazy. And I'll get this ready. This will probably take two coats, but I'm going to make quite a bit to make sure that I can cover the entire frame. This is what I'm going to be painting, the frame of this. So hopefully I can get that done pretty quickly. And since I have uh, a lot of paint on my knife, I guess I'm going to, let me just first of all shut off the music for a few seconds. There we go. And then now I am just going to go over to my little kitchen area over there and wash, uh, wash this off. There we go. Just take a few seconds. Always try to keep the materials as clean as possible. And I might as well get the camera ready for the next section of our painting. So I am going to go with a purple, but not as dark as this because it's going to dry. When it dries, I'll be even darker. I see I had that little pop up again. Get rid of that guy. Got to keep an eye out on that. And sometimes it's practical to have that little pop up window. And I have my, uh, my keyboard right here with a bunch of shortcuts. But for some reason, this little this little pop-up window likes to come on by itself, especially when I play the music. So I have to keep an eye out on it. And since I don't play the music all that often, I have a tendency to forget about that. Not that it's a big deal, really. It's like, uh, what is that? That little pop-up is my webcam. It just shows another angle of the of the studio, really not all that bad. So I'm gonna, not sure the quantity of white paint I want to put on that. I don't want it to be too light either. Too, not too dark, not too light. So I'm going to try it like this and then we'll see what the result is. I'll go over to camera number one and mix these two together and we can kind of figure out what we want uh, together. So let me also get the right kind of paintbrush I'm going to be using afterwards. Something not too wide. This looks like the perfect candidate right here. So put that guy to soak. And 
am I going to have enough paint here? I'm not sure. I think so. We'll find out in a few minutes. So let me just go over then to camera number one here. I'll bring it down like this. And we can uh, work in these colors together. I have some water right here, which is pretty handy. So let's just mix it all in. Let's mix it up. If we have to add white, we'll add white. If we have to add purple, we'll do that. All we want to do, though, is make sure everything is nice and homogenous. It looks to me it's going to be a little light. I would like to have it like this kind of purple right here, but we'll see. We'll see because the purple really overwhelms the white very quickly as well. So let's just mix everything together, get everything to be the right consistency. Let's add some more water to that. And one thing is for sure is that we want this purple to be darker than our background purple that we have here. So that should be easy to do. Now that's what we have to keep in mind. We want this a little bit darker than what we have. And so far, that's exactly what we do have. Now this is the part when I mix these that I have to be careful not to be too sloppy. It's being so cold, I just got lazy and didn't want to take off my shoes and pants and put on my cold working clothes and then after that take them off to put on my regular clothes. It's all oh, the temperatures just dropped again. And just to think how it must be in Eastern Europe there. In Ukraine, it must be freezing. Ukraine, Poland. Ugh. So this probably will just be the first coat because I know this paint. You'll, I'll be able to see every brush stroke I have, so I'll have to put in a second coat. And that's when I'm going to have to have the right color that pleases my eyeballs. This so far I can, I can uh, cheat with, but hopefully I'll have, I'm gonna add just a little bit more water just to make sure that I have, this paint will cover the entire frame to my canvas. Theoretically it should. I'm just gonna make sure, and let's try it like that. So that looks pretty good. Let's bring the camera up here now. I'm going to start off like I always do on that upper left hand corner. Of course, I'm going to leave a little edge of white so that this canvas can be stretched eventually on a frame. Okay, so let's go for it. Okay, I'm just doing that and I can tell right now that it's going to be too dark. I know this paint, it has a tendency to darken as, uh, as it dries. So I am going to come back down here. We'll, we'll be mixing in some more white. And I'm going to come back over here where I will add some more white right away. To our purple. Even though it's the first coat, uh, like I mentioned, it's the second coat that's going to be the crucial color, final color that we'll want to have just right. But I may as well start as close as possible to what I would like to have as a finishing look. So, did that. Let's go back to camera number one. We'll add then this white to our paint and lighten it. So 
let's mix all this together so it's nice and homogenous. I mean, in the palette, the color looks very nice. But like I said, as I put it on the canvas, I could tell right away that it would darken to be really too dark. And this here might still be too dark as well. But we'll see. Let's just, let's work this all. There we go. So we don't have any streaks of white or streaks of purple. So we're almost there. I can still see quite some some streaks as I try to blend these two colors together. Well, we're just about right, just about there. There we go. Okay, so let's try this. Let's bring the camera back up. Let me move it to the side again so I'm not in front of the lens. And let's see what we have here. Yes, it's a little bit lighter. This area will darken because I'm going on top of that, that other purple, but when we put the second coat on, it'll be okay. Let me just blend my brush back in the palette and get some more purple so it blends in all my brush. There we go. Here, I'm just going to be careful because I don't want it to splatter any of this purple onto my canvas as well. So, Just gonna do this top. Just do the top part here. go. I'll just switch back to camera number one for a few minutes. Oops. There we go. Most likely there will be a, a black edge between the dark purple and the main painting. There's no need for me to be that precise, but I can't help myself. If 
Comment Hein bah, Je sais pas, elle l'avait dit vers 14h30, mais bon. Là. Je lui ai dit de venir avant 17h en tout cas, parce que moi je me. J'aurais trop froid, quoi. Je vais pas très. J'ai froid, moi j'ai pas très bien. Hein. Ouais, je comprends. Il est venu. Oui, euh... Il est venu, il a repris sa toile, il nous remercie encore beaucoup. Je lui dis, n'hésite pas quand tu as besoin. Ouais. C'est vrai que pour faire un fond quand tu as un grand format, c'est commode au rez-de-chaussée. En plus, lui, il habite dans le vieux Nice. Alors... Il n'y euh, avait pas les tomates qui se. Qui se qui sont passés à travers. Oui. Ouais, J'ai vu hier quand c'était mouillé, je si. me suis dit... Ça... Il a rigolé, il a dit ça va faire un effet <rire> spécial. C'est sûr. Ça, faisait, ça fait un drôle d'effet, c'est pas mal, tu sais, entre parenthèses, l'effet. Mm -hmm. Ça fait un effet de matière, en fait, sur la toile. Oui, oui. Ouais. Ouais, J'ai regardé, j'ai vu ça hein, quand j'ai éteint la lumière hier et je me suis dit, tiens, euh, je ne sais pas s'il a pensé à ça. Non. Bien sûr que la toile était encore mouillée, donc... Il n'a euh... pas pensé et... Découvert euh, <rire> ouais. en même temps que euh, voilà, quand il est venu. Mais ça, ça, ça l'a pas dérangé du tout. Ah oh, merde. Ça, ça, il y a des projections dessus. Oui, voilà. voilà. Et après, un petit peu, il y a aussi sa peinture dessus. Et bon, c'est pas. C'est jouable, c'est jouable. Il était très content en tout cas. On lui avait enlevé une épine du pied. There we go. I don't think I'm going to have enough paint to actually do the whole thing here. But it doesn't matter. We'll do our best. Oh, I guess I'll grab my chair for this next part. And I might as well bring camera number one over. When do I start over here? I'm used to starting on the left-hand side, so I might as well stick with it. And I'll come back to over here. There we go. Grab a little bit of water while I'm here. 
going to keep my fingers crossed that I'll have enough paint. It's going to be tight, but whatever. So let's go to number one here. Get the hard part done first. Well, not that it's hard, it's just that you want to keep a steady, steady brush. For as long as you can reach. <laughs> there we go. And then after that, it's just like house painting. talking with a friend of mine who's a painter as well in Paris and we were talking about how people like really uh, get upset when you tell them the prices of your paintings and how they always find it to be too expensive but I was telling her that if you related if you told uh, if the 